What's up guys? Hope you had some fun times up in my butthole. Anyways, we have got the package of isopods that I said that we were gonna get here. And we got these guys, we're gonna go set them up. So let's do that. All right, so we're gonna open these guys. We have three species of isopods here and we have their enclosures set up right behind me. Uh, there's no real mystery on what species they are. I believe I said we have rubber duckies, cappuccinos, and panda kings. These come from us. These come to us from the world of isopods. Not sponsored. I just decided to uh, use them because they had the cheaper prices for the stuff that I wanted. They also had a 10% off discount uh, for new people, so I took advantage of that. Anyways, all right, let's get in here. So these guys are. This is a. I think this is a cold pack actually. Yeah, it's a cold pack because it was a bit hot and uh, it's actually kind of cool since they were shipped out. It hasn't necessarily been that hot, but uh, <clears throat> here they are. Uh, I'm going to start with Panda Kings and uh, there I already see them moving around. That's actually really cool. So I got 10 of each. This is a decent amount to start with, especially since these guys are a bit expensive. Um, I'm just going to leave the sphagnum moss in the enclosure with them. There's no real purpose and uh, in uh, trying to throw this away, but uh, take this off. Let's see what we can do. And oh my goodness. So these are Panda King isopods, Cubera species Panda King. And uh, that's not an actual taxonomic name. These guys, that's just a nickname. Uh, these guys are really cool here. Let's see if we can try to get one out of there. So Cubaris are known to conglobate, which is this rolling up into a little ball. It's called conglobation. Not all isopods can conglobate, but Cubaris definitely do it quite a bit. These guys are de definitely very easy to get set up. So I'm not too worried about them necessarily. They don't have the most extravagant enclosure because they didn't need the most extravagant enclosure. We should set these up first. All right, first up here, we have our Panda King isopods. Now we've got them set up in here. We can see them crawling around or whatever. We got a couple there, you know, like one over here. Um, to sort of explain this enclosure a little bit, this is the hydration station, as I like to call it. Basically, it is some damp sphagnum moss that will uh, provide a very humid area for the isopods to sort of escape into if they ever need to uh, get back into the flow of things because isopods do like having an area too that's a little bit moister. Uh, this is the sort of moisture gradient that we have going on. This side is a lot less misted than this side. This side is way more humid than that, so it gives that little moisture gradient that isopods like. We have some botanicals in here. They can munch on these. These are sweet gum pods. I'm gonna probably get a magnolia pod in here too. We have a hide. Nothing under there right now, but um, they can hide under this if they so choose. And then we have the main food source, and there's already some isopods in here actually, uh, which is the decayed hardwood leaf litter. Would you look at that? It's probably just went under there. These guys will run away. Let's see if we can find some uh, springtails in here, because there are springtails. They like to uh, sort of, there's some right there. Sort of jumping around. These are the normal temperate springtails. I believe they are columbola species. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, sort of first one we have set up here. So we can move on to the second one, which I think will be the rubber duckies. Alrighty. So these are the Cubera species rubber ducky. Now, if we want to look at these guys here, these guys are the famous isopod that everyone knows about. They are known for being expensive, adorable, and just overall cute. Here we can see some. Ice uh, rubber duckies come in a couple color morphs. There's the blonde ducky and then the, reg the regular ducky. White duckies are not rubber duckies. They are different species. These seem to be a little bit blonde because blonde does show up in rubber ducky colonies. Uh, the reason for that is because it's similar to albinism where the color changes depending on some traits within the dna of the animal uh, and so if you have a rubber ducky colony you can just start separating out the blonder ones and you can have yourself a blonde ducky colony however these seem to be mostly the normal which is what i purchased i got these guys for way cheaper than 20 bucks a piece they came for about eight 
and we can get them set up in their new enclosure. So here we have the rubber ducky enclosure. It's very similar to the last one, but if you'll notice, we have these little magnolia pods, and these guys are awesome because I have heard that rubber duckies adore these magnolia pods. So what we're going to do is start taking out the sphagnum moss, just sort of dump it in there, you know? This is already sort of dampened and the rubber duckies can disperse throughout. Like that one's very blonde. I don't know if it'll darken as it gets older, but that one's decently blonde. We can look around in here. This one's closer to the normal coloration. This one looks kind of interesting right there. I got 10 of these guys too. Once again, they are a bit, you know, it's gonna take a little bit for you to get a decent breeding colony going, but once you get it going, it's, it's going, you know? So uh, I guess we'll just leave them in there. Ooh, I'm gonna push this down because I do not want them next to that air hole at all. I don't want them climbing out. There is minimal ventilation you'll notice throughout these enclosures because they don't necessarily need it. We have more springtails in here too. They've probably dispersed throughout though. And uh, I think that's about it for the rubber duckies. There's not much else I can say about these really. So we can move on to the cappuccinos next. Alrighty. Finally up is my personal favorite from this. It is the cappuccino. I love cappuccino isopods. These guys are definitely my favorite cubaris and one of my favorite isopods ever. Um, I uh, got 10 of these as well. And these guys were really cool. So we're gonna definitely have to put these, right? These are very different from both of the previous. They don't really have many that look like them. We can take the lid off here. That is awesome. Just look at them for a minute. Look at those colors. Whoa. And I think these guys are small, actually. I think these are small. I think they get much larger than this. But, uh, and they're all on top too. They're so cute. I'm definitely going to be growing my isopod collection. I'd like to get some Porcelio species like Expansus, Hoffmansegi, and Werneri. Definitely wanting to continue to grow my Cubaris collection and just get some Armadillidium species, you know, stuff like that. But these guys are so cool. So glad I got these. <laughs> Look at them. Ah. So we have five on top here. I guess we're gonna get their enclosure ready. Alrighty, we have a similar setup here to the rubber duckies. In fact, it is the exact same setup, just a larger piece of cork bark. Um, once again, hydration station. This is their magnolia pod, and this is their dried leaf, dead leaf stuff. Whatever that was supposed to mean. All right, so we're just gonna take these cappuccinos dump them on top. No, that's not what I wanted to do necessarily. Uh, I wanted to get them just off in here. There's a bunch in here now. Oh, they're all running around my children, my cute, beautiful children. You got them? Mm-hmm. You can sort of, oh, there's one like right here. It's like, trying to oh, and there's one on the bottom. He's already walking around I used to make fun of isopod keepers just like the ones who had 70,000 isopods and I understand why now to be honest with you I was being I wasn't being very uh open-minded I should have definitely considered keeping these guys oh there's two on here that's so cool so it's definitely recommended if you're gonna get isopods that you start out with like 10 or something like that because really uh, well, you want to get as many as possible. So maybe a little bit more than 10, probably closer to 20. Um, because you, if any of them die, you want to make sure that you can come back from that. But um, 10 is okay, especially for these higher end isopods, which are decently expensive. Like these guys cost a tad bit of money. So you want to make sure that you're getting them all situated, but also not spending too much money. Uh, as for these being cleanup crew i i wouldn't suggest that these are not really cleanup crew isopods you really don't want to do that because you're just going to waste your money they're going to get eaten by your reptiles and they need particular sort of setups which can't really be provided in your average um 
for bioactive. Some isopods that people keep as pets, you can definitely keep uh, as a bioactive. That one's really tiny. Oh, wow. Not baby tiny, but tiny. Anyways, some isopods you can keep as pets and as bioactive, but not most of them. But uh, that's all the isopods, man. I mean, it's pretty epic. We're going to have to try our absolute hardest to leave them the fuck alone. I am really bad about leaving shit alone. I just have to continuously touch them and look at them. But I will make sure that I fight that urge to keep these guys alive and make sure that they breed because they stress out very easily. They stress out way more than anything else. If you're a new isopod keeper, you got to make sure that you just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. So that's them all set up there. We have some other stuff here. We have our millipedes and our oniscus ocellus, as well as a pseudo scorpion colony that I'm trying to start. There's some millipedes. The millipedes are pooping a lot. They're really thriving. And those orange springtail. <laughs> so for the rest of this video, I thought that we would take some time to feed a couple of snakes. We have three to feed. The squam, my female ball python, and the milk snake. Firstly, though, I saw this at the fucking uh, gas station today. It's the new Red Bull flavor. Summer edition. It's Karuba elderflower. I was just going to test it real quick. Bringing back monster energy uh, drink test. Yeah. I don't know, this is just a throwaway second to see what it tastes like. That's really weird. I don't even know what it tastes like. You're a cameraman. You taste. That's right, buddy. Is it good? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> it's like mango. Oh, I don't know about that. Like, bittersweet. It's very bittersweet. It's kind of sour apple -y. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, we have some rodents here. I'm gonna take this little hopper. I really should be feeding probably adult mice, but I only had hoppers. So we're gonna feed this milk snake here. This is not the greatest enclosure, but um, I'm gonna have to say that somebody get a real one soon. She doesn't care. Oh, you suck. Oh my God, you're terrible at this. She has really bad aim. There we go, finally. Fucking dumbass. <laughs> Stupid as shit. And we have two for her, but while she gets that one down, we're gonna feed the squam. If you wanna turn that on. Alright, so this is my squam and colorectus enclosure. So actually, you can see there's a stick insect in here. She eats the fern here, and it doesn't bother these two. So it's kind of like I have a jungle enclosure going on. There's isopods in here and springtails, a bunch of moss. I love this enclosure. I'm really proud of it. But we are going to take him off of his perch really quick. This is my squam. And we are going to... They don't bother each other, by the way. They're just kind of chilling with each other. We are going to put him on the ground right here because we need him in an open space. Can you, do you know? Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. All right, cool. Great. We sort of need a good open space and we're going to give him some mice. So the way that you tap the tail, it's called a cauldron lure right here. If you tap that tail, it'll entice them to eat. So that's what we're going to do. We keep tapping it. And he kind of, I think he, I think he got it, yeah. Ah, uh, he got the tong too. His tongs are a bit big. Let's see if I can... Nah, he got the tongs as well. Uh, you want your piece? There we go. There we go. Now he's got it. And so it'll take a while for him to actually get that down. But, um, yeah. You can see that there. That's cool. He's epic. All right, now we got the other hopper. I'm gonna give it to the, the uh, milk snake again. She should still be hungry. She'll eat as much as. There we go. Milk snakes love food. They're very easy to feed. I don't have any issues with her. I want to get her a better enclosure because this isn't kind of subpar. I mean, like breeders keep them in. Uh, breeders keep theirs in bins, but I want to make sure that if I'm going to be keeping a snake, it's at least in a nice enclosure. So I'm going to be going on Facebook Marketplace soon or whatever, spend up a, a little bit of money, make sure that she has a nice enclosure. But uh, for now, the bin. Next up, we have just this big-ass rat that we're waiting for it to thaw out. We have a uh, 
ball python to feed and uh, we have to make sure that this shit gets up to room temperature or at least the temperature of your body so that it she'll actually eat it she will not eat a cold or even like room temperature mouse it's just not gonna happen turn it off. <laughs> on guard all right we're gonna feed zelda this is zelda she's my female ball python i believe people on this channel know who zelda is at the very least this thing has been warmed up so hopefully she will take it if you want to get in there No, she is really reluctant to eat. I don't know why. Try beating her face with it. They do what Tyler Nolan does where he just goes, Fuck it, eat it, eat it. Dude, I'm like, dude, he doesn't want it. That's not going to make the snake want to eat it. Yeah, I don't think she wants it. That's yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, so we got the other way. Yeah, bye. Alright, so I think that this is where we're going to have to end the video. We uh, unboxed the isopods like I said I would. They finally came in. It took a while for them to get shipped out, but uh, there were no DOAs. They were supposed to be shipped out last Wednesday, but they were actually shipped out this Wednesday, which is why that happened. Um, fed some snakes. That's cool. Uh, the room is doing good. We're going to be expanding our collection here as much as we can. Uh, maybe sell some stuff once we get some breeding colonies going. I have some stuff lined up in the future. We're making money. We're, you know. And uh, I think that's about all, guys. See you in the next one.